I'm Sharon Brown, clinical physical therapist at Children's Hospital of Richmond at VCU. You have published a major article. It's about uh, work of, of putting research knowledge into practice. Why were you interested in knowledge translation? What, what was the key for you in this? This has been a program or a, a venture project of about 10 years work of Stacy and I working together. So a collaboration between Stacy being the researcher and me being the clinician. And it was important to share this body of knowledge because it was a way that we changed clinical practice and we wanted to share that with a larger body with our whole pediatric community to say that this is important and it is doable. As a clinician, how difficult has it been to absorb new areas of knowledge that have been generated by researchers? Well, I think um, all of us physical therapists really want to learn new knowledge and we want to find a way to implement it in our clinical practice. I think we sometimes come upon obstructions that are system-wide and it makes it very difficult. And this particular point in time, we were able to have um, a, a culmination of several things happen at this point. And we had a change in our NICU actual physical location. We had a new um, director come into our NICU, um, a physician. And um, Stacy had come on board as a researcher. And I had this big interest of how to change practice. And of course, in physical therapy, experience is very important. And that has to be combined with any new knowledge, new evidence. So what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, the NICU is a pretty special area um, for physical therapy, and it, it really has to have some mentorship with that. Um, Stacy provided some of that mentorship for me, and then we just established this relationship together that she was having this research to answer some clinical questions, and I was able to help guide her in answering um, and shaping those clinical questions that would make it relative to translating what she found as a researcher into my clinical practice. What, for you, were the important questions to ask and have answers to? Um, it, there's a limited amount of knowledge in pediatric right, uh, research. We, that's what we're doing. It's building that. And it's important to find out, starting with babies that are so small, is it important and how is it important to look at their motor development? How can we change that and give parents the tools in order to help the baby's motor development at home before they get to be, you know, a year or two years old. And, and how long has it been important to focus on motor development uh, in the NICU? It's always been important to focus on motor development. I think we're now shining some light on um, what it is that we need to do as clinicians in order to support parents to understand that motor development is important for babies who are born preterm and to it doesn't just stop in the NICU, it continues to home as well. Um, and we just want to provide more evidence that this is something parents can do. What did you do in this study? Well, it wasn't a study. It was a general body of knowledge that we added to um, kind of this overall, like this is how you can translate your practice, how you can take what we did. And so what we ended up doing is we had a few studies all together. Um, we did a speedy feasibility study, another speedy study, and then we did a start play study. Uh, and that's how Stacy and I worked together as collaborators between clinician and researcher. But what we did to actually translate our knowledge is that we changed the health system's practice because we had to educate more physical therapists. We had to get buy-in from my administrator and we had to also get buy-in from the neonatal intensive care unit um, practitioners to say that motor development is important. And babies we know that are in the NICU stay for several weeks and several months. And so in a health system that tries to turn over um, lots of beds and lots of patients and say clear for discharge is important, babies' motor development is actually super important because we're affecting not only what happens right there in the first few months of their lives, but we're affecting what happens for the rest of our, their lives as well. How easy is it for you to cooperate with researchers to make things get better? Um, researchers are available, and researchers are always looking for clinicians to collaborate with because they want to hone their questions to answer real-life situations. And lots of times researchers have 
questions that they might ask that might not be truly translatable, but they're so willing to work with clinicians to say, let's add to our body of knowledge and what is meaningful to you, but also what is meaningful to your population that is receiving services for you. And it's important to have those evidence-based um, answers so that we can help parents be advocates for their children and help affect um, motor development in a positive way. The goal of this paper was really to help to understand how you can collaborate between a researcher and a clinician and how that collaboration can move research into practice at a faster rate. A lot of this has looked at the development of postural control in infants who were born very preterm and really identifying that there are some early risk factors and early factors we can identify for who's at risk for developmental delays. In addition to that work, we've been able to identify some interventions that work, that work in the neonatal intensive care unit based on reviewing evidence and applying things into practice, but also being able to think about what questions are still out there that need to be answered. Could you give me a little bit of how you did this? Because you, you actually used your own experience over a period of time in the NICU. So what did you have to do and what sorts of things did you look at? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I worked as a clinician in the neonatal intensive care unit for years. Um, and through that collaboration and even my ongoing time in both the neonatal intensive care unit and the follow-up program, we really saw how some parents and infants worked collaboratively to support the baby's development, even in the NICU, and then certainly afterwards, while other families really didn't know how to collaborate and to provide the adequate support for their infant to really advance that baby's development over the long term. So we really identified that in the transition to home is a very important time to provide intervention, but so is the neonatal intensive care unit and the period of time at home. Through the collaborations, both clinically and through research, Sharon and I have been able to implement some of the practices that are recommended in the evidence into our neonatal intensive care unit. Things like positioning infants using flexion, providing opportunities for social, motor, and cognitive-based play in the neonatal intensive care unit, and probably most importantly, helping parents understand why that should happen. Because if parents understand that, they can continue to support it when the infants go home. So, so what other areas of new knowledge came out of this, and how much of an evidence base is there for these? Yeah, one of the major challenges in most of pediatric physical therapy, but certainly in the neonatal intensive care unit, is the evidence is not very strong for what we do, particularly as physical therapists. There is evidence for the basics of developmental care and providing positioning support, so those things were the first to try to implement in the neonatal intensive care unit. The evidence for what therapists do in terms of direct service delivery or direct service delivery for infants even in the first few years of life after being in the NICU is quite limited. Um, but knowing this and working together with a clinician, we've been able to ask some important research questions about what is the evidence out there and what are some basic principles we can apply. While we're now testing those principles in clinical trials, um, we can start to implement some of them from a clinical standpoint as well. Of course, originally the idea of the NICU was to make sure babies survived. Now you're able to go a lot further than this. It really is that babies are surviving from birth at much, much younger ages. The limits of viability is now considered around 22 weeks of gestation. That means that babies are spending close to four months in the neonatal intensive care unit before they're going home, and sometimes much longer. That means that we have an opportunity to provide developmental support and encourage neuroplasticity that supports the infant's ongoing development instead of having what I would term negative neuroplasticity and having babies practice movement patterns and behaviors that really are not gonna be supportive of their development long-term. So the goal is to set the stage for their long-term development. So what are the big lessons coming out of this for pediatric physical therapists? For me, the biggest lesson is that physical therapists who do research and who work in clinical practice need to talk to each other, that we get better research questions and better evidence for practice when we can collaborate together. Research is a two-way street. Clinicians help ask the best questions that are the most applicable to practice, 
they're also the people who would need to implement the work in the day-to-day -day interactions. So if the questions we ask as researchers are not important to clinicians or don't uh, allow them to make changes in practice, then they're not that important. So by asking them and working together, we can both inform practice and translate it at a faster rate. So if you were to summarize the sort of take-home messages clinically coming out of this, what would they be? I think the biggest take-home message is to reach out to your research collaborators. Researchers need to reach out to clinicians to make sure that we have a two-way street between our research and our clinical practice, because that's going to make evidence-based practice the most salient and allow knowledge to be translated as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for being here.